the, um, the task here of speaking a little bit about redemption. And I think that sometimes when we think of the topic of redemption, we always seem to err on the side of individual redemption. Um, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. And then, you know, we forget that there is corporate redemption. And I think, you know, we get so consumed with individual. You got to remember your, your redemption as an individual has been taken care of a long time ago. And that what it really means is to buy out. And the term is used specifically in reference to the purchase of a slave's freedom. So Jesus has already purchased your freedom. Well. Now, what we need to do as the body of Christ is to participate in a little corporate redemption. Now, sometimes as Christians, we can be a little selfish. It's all about me and I'm going to get my praise on and you know, you get yours the best way you can. But I want to read a little something here when we're talking about a redemptive community. Through nonviolence, courage displaces fear, love transforms hate, acceptance dissipates prejudice, hope ends despair, peace dominates war, faith reconciles doubt, mutual regard cancels enmity, justice for all overthrows injustice. community. We try to pretend that history has never happened. We try to sweep unpleasant and painful things under the carpet. We have a tendency to put a band-aid on things. And you know what happens when you put a band-aid on a wound that has not been properly irrigated. That has not of the concept of race. Race in terms of communities and race in terms of how we talk to each other or about each other. Merely saying that I am black or he is white or she is Asian really in this day doesn't say a whole lot about a whole lot. Um, folk consider me an African American, which I am not. I was born and red in the Bahamas. My skin color is black. So it's, it's confusing. And every time I fill out an application, if they don't have black on that form, I check other. Yes. Which must be very, very confusing to folks. And when you look at the Korean folks who have been oppressed by Japanese, calling them Asians, brings back some really bad memories. And I don't think that that is a term that they would hold for themselves. So we need to understand the limitations of race and be intentional about our word choice. The second thing we need to do is stop simplifying history. History is messy. History is complicated. And that is a barrier to us having a 
redemptive community. Because if truth is not on the table, community won't happen. Distrust and mistrust will abound. And when we look at the Africans who were born here as slaves, forced into sharecropping, to build a lasting community. Then we also need to talk about the, in the Native Americans, the Seminoles and the Cherokees, who were forced off the same land down the Trail of Tears. Uh, and then we also need to talk about the Chinese who were brought to America during the height of the Industrial Revolution to build the railroad. Then we also need to talk about the Jewish and the Irish and the Italian who were forced into sweatshops in order to supply goods for the market that the railroad sprung up. So when we talk about history, as you can see, Bishop, it gets complicated. It's not just a black or white thing. And that we need to memorialize the great crimes that have been committed in the name of race. We don't we don't write it down. We don't tell the stories. Because when we neglect to memorialize it, when we neglect to do that, folks have a tendency to forget where they come from and the promises that they need to fulfill. We are still trying to fulfill Dr. Martin Luther King's promise of a beloved community. No banking, no schools, no work sometimes. That's not what that day is about. That's not what it should commemorate. But because the stories, we have neglected to memorialize the stories, that is what we have reduced his legacy to. And so, you know, so we need to memorialize the crimes that have been committed in the name of race. There can be no healing of cultural wounds that not acknowledge and examine these crimes. You know, some of us black folks still waiting for our 40 acres and a mule. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Ah, uh, because it was promised to us. That's right, Dr. Rucker. It was promised. And we still wait. Amen for that. And we need to stop also treating race and racism as topics that only black folk can talk about. You know, we get mad when white folk come and they try to participate in the national conversation. They have a right to. And we have a duty as people of color to exercise grace when they mess up, because you know they will. It is inevitable. They don't live the life, but to for someone who sits at the table of privilege, to take it upon themselves to give up the privilege, to participate in a dialogue, to move it forward, that ought to be commended. And we know sometimes Folks are going to say clumsy things. And when we were in here dialoguing and debating and massaging the nuances of race and racism and redemptive and beloved communities, we need to understand that we're not always going to agree. And we can disagree without being disagreeable with each other. So I'm encouraging people of color, don't, don't pack your toys and go home. Stay. It is a painful process, but stay. I'm encouraging folk of the dominant culture not to clam up and say nothing because you're afraid you're going to say the wrong thing. I'm encouraging you to speak up and to speak out because it's only when you do that and when you move in that direction 
Can you now allow for an honest conversation? Amen. And sometimes I think we people of color stop holding our white brethren and sister into a hidden standard. Yeah, see, we got sins too. Don't hold them to a hidden standard. Know the rules of the game if I'm going to participate in the game. So if there is a score sheet I need, please give it to me. If I can do A and B but not C until I've done D, somebody needs to tell a sister. And I think the same way we want fairness, we need to give our brethren and sisterin of the dominant culture fairness. What are your standards? Don't have step back. Go back to basics. Start from the beginning. Because again, we forget that it was white folk who started the NAACP. Uh-huh. We forget that it was white folk who were marching with Martin Luther King Jr. and, and, and John Lewis. We forget that the Underground Railroad, if white folk didn't help, many of the slaves would not Thank you. 